It had become so popular that in 1995, the King's Cove Historical Society erected a large, sturdy sign in the place where it all began. King's Cove, Bonavista Bay, on the eastern coast of Newfoundland. Featuring the first verse of Pat Murphy's Meadow, the sign informed tourists that Pat Murphy, who died in middle age, lived just above the present fisherman's wharf, and that the words of the ballad were written by John Martin Devine, a noted orator and businessman. The son of Michael Devine and Catherine Martin, John Martin Devine was born on the 2nd of November 1876 in King's Cove, home to many Irish settlers. On leaving school, he worked for Philip Templeman, a Bonavista businessman, and in 1903 he married Mary Joseph Gushu from St John's, Newfoundland. After working as a salesman for Marshall Brothers of St John's, in 1921 he was appointed Trade Commissioner to the United States, his job taking him to New Jersey. We do not know exactly when Devine composed the words of Pat Murphy's Meadow, but his verses were most likely written as a fond salute to his teen years when he supported his widow mother by scything grass on Pat Murphy's little patch of land. Devine left New York State in 1931 and on returning to St. John's, he opened at 339 Water Street the Big Six, a clothing store which would later become the main sponsor of an Irish music radio programme on VOCM, an AM radio station broadcasting on 590 kilohertz to St. John's and Labrador. One of Devine's favourite Irish music groups was the McNulty family all three members of which were based in New York. In the 1930s and well into the 50s, Anne, or Ma McNulty, and her two children, Peter and Eileen, were one of the best-known acts on the eastern coast of America, their numerous recordings being frequently heard on many US radio stations. In the late 1940s, VOCM broadcast Divine's the Big Six Show, a 30-minute Saturday morning programme dedicated to playing songs by the McNulty's. It's worth noting that the group's singles and albums could also be purchased at the Big Six store. Devine had become so smitten by their music that in 1949 he sent all four verses of Pat Murphy's Meadow to Anne McNulty, who, along with her son Peter, set to work on writing an accompanying melody. In a letter of thanks, Anne told Devine that she was simply delighted with it. <music> Anne McNulty then approached Theodotes Demetriades, a record producer and owner of Standard Records in New York, asking him if he would consider releasing the song on his record label. Having informed the Big Six store owner that Demiatrades had expressed an interest, Devine wrote back to Anne, his letter dated October 10th, 1950, and headed with the logo, The Big Six, once a number, now an institution. It is my conviction that the song is very much in keeping with the sentiment of many of your numbers and I feel you will do it justice. You have the written permission, as you stated, to Mr. Demetriades to record Pat Murphy's Meadow for Standard. I am not familiar with Standard Records. In closing, I again repeat that I want to hear the song sung by the McNulty family, and if the Standard does not protect its rights, then I shall be compelled to hand it over to some other reputable institution. Having accepted an invitation from Devine to stage concerts in Newfoundland, the McNulty's arrived in St John's in 1953 to commence a two-month tour, during which, we may assume, they treated their audiences to Pat Murphy's Meadow, Anne playing the Melodian, Eileen taking lead vocal. 
Returning to New York, they finally recorded the song for Standard, an acoustic guitar providing accompaniment to Anne's melodion and Eileen's singing. Released as When I Mowed Pat Murphy's Meadow, it was included on Standard's 1958 album, 12 Authentic Irish Folk Songs. Alas, John Martin Devine would not live to see the day when his song would become an international success. He died on the 28th of February 1959 and was laid to rest in Belvedere Catholic Cemetery, St John's, with his wife Mary. Moving on 15 years to 1974, the year in which Donegal born Aidan O'Hara and his wife Joyce arrived in Newfoundland. Aidan, a singer in his own right, was there to embark on a two year course at Memorial University in St John's. Soon after, he found himself doing freelance work for CBC television and radio and warmly accepted an invitation to appear on a television programme commemorating the 25th anniversary of Newfoundland joining the Confederation of Canada. During the programme, called Come All Ye Good People, Aidan and Joyce performed a closely harmonised rendition of Pat Murphy's Meadow. In 1978, Aidan and Joyce returned to Ireland, where they were asked to appear on Trum Agus Aetrum, an RTE television programme presented by Liam O'Murrachu, during which they again sang Pat Murphy's Meadow. A short time later, Aidan presented for RTE the weekly radio programme Falcha is Chock, which was soon inundated with requests for the song. Patrick Joseph, or PJ, Murrahey, a fine singer from Mulla and County Clare, subsequently recorded a sublime version, which he included on his 1985 cassette, Memories of Clare. Other versions would follow, from singers such as Daniel O'Donnell, Johnny McAvoy and Brendan Shine. Here follows a recording of the McNulty family singing John Martin Devine's Pat Murphy's Meadow. The autumn days are here again The night winds chilly blow The woodlands turn I dream again of days long past To come no more I know When I mowed Pat Murphy's meadow In the sunny long ago I see the blue of ocean And the distant sail afar as the maiden in the meadow strikes the tune of locking gun, there was music so. And the singer warbling sweetly on the burning granite mill. I hear again at sunset where sweet Afton's waters flow as I mourn. The snows of yesteryear, and when evening shades. 